Hello there. My lecture today is about calculating the maximum power dissipated by a pass transistor or a driver or an output stage of an amplifier. See if the signal was just a DC, half of the voltage across the load resistor would cause the maximum power across the driver or the pass transistor. But when we have other type of signals, like for example a sinusoidal sine wave, the story is different. Okay. As we see here in the graph, you have your plus VCC, let's supply your drivers, and you have the ground, you have the minus VEE, okay, and you have the load signal in here, and this part is the NPN transistor, or the NMOS is responsible for it, and that negative one in here, which takes its power, of course, from the minus VEE, is for the PMP transistor. Now, for such a wave like this, what is the maximum power when the maximum power occurs across that driver or across that pass, pass device? Okay. Now, note if the peak, if this peak of the output signal, was all the way to the VCC, then of course you are going to have a maximum current across the load, but not enough voltage drop across the passing transistor. Therefore, the power is not going to be the maximum. So that means that whenever you raise the volume all the way up in an audio amplifier, don't worry much about the drivers or the passing transistors because they are not subjected to that much of a stress, okay? And at the same time, if you lower the volume all the way down and make that signal very close to the ground, the same thing will happen. You will have much of voltage lift across the passing device or the MPN transistor, okay? But at the same time, you have much less current. So that's the idea between case one and case two, you're gonna have that maximum power. And with that maximum power dissipated by the pass transistor, it occurs when you when when the peak voltage across that load equals two over by times VCC. That's 0.63 of the VCC. So whenever you have your volume near the half, a little bit more than a half in an audio amplifier, that means you are stressing your transistors very much. Of course, not stressing the power supply, but stressing the transistors. And you have to calculate the needed heat sink for this condition. Okay, so I gave the conclusion. Now we're gonna go to the derivation and see that how, how we reached this conclusion. Okay, so the idea that you can look at this again. You have that NPN transistor with that peak. This is the, the voltage across the load. So whatever this area in here, whatever this area is left for the pass transistor. We don't have to worry much about this part for the NPN transistor because the current is zero, the voltage is zero and the current is zero, okay? For this part, you have this area, is the voltage across the load, and whatever is left here is across that passing transistor, and that's what causes the heat, okay? And here, of course, the same thing is the maximum current that you will have. So we'll go on to the analysis now and see how we reach the conclusion that the maximum power occurs across the pass transistor is when you have an output across the load that equals 2 over by multiplied by the VCC. Uh, 
that's worth mentioning here too how the voltages go just in case okay so you have the transistor area it's for that MP and the transistor you have that blue area for the PMP transistor I know that this is conducts only for half the cycle so whenever you average it you get half of it because it does nothing in here and all the conduction happens in here so whenever you average it you get half of it and the same thing down there that means for the the current the peak current of the transistor or the current of the transistor okay or the power it's the same thing and in here this is the current the value of the maximum current and the peak for it which is the peak of the power too okay let's go to the analysis now and see how we reached our conclusion it's a little bit of theory but it's not that much difficult though I know many people don't like much theory but this is a very useful useful part and we go quick through it okay so we have the power of the load the power of the load as we all know is the peak divided by the square word of two that's that's the rms value of the voltage across the load divided by the load so the rms is squared divided by r which equals the peak squared divided by the root square of two that equals the peak squared divided by 2rl and we know the power across the transistor while it's conducting it will be equal the power of the power of the power supply minus the power of the load so you get your power across the supply you have the power of the load you are left with the power of the transistor in here okay and the average current of the power supply equals the peak voltage divided by rl okay that means the peak current you can say that too multiplied by 2 over pi which is the peak current as written in here multiplied by 2 over pi okay which is a point six. that's the average of any half sine wave this is the average for it okay and uh, the power of the power supply it will be equal to the VCC multiplied by the, the average of the ICC that's the power and what's true RMS taking from the power supply which also equals to 2 times VCC multiplied by the VL peak the V across the load peak divided by by multiplied by RL by RL okay so that equals the power of the power supply and you have the power across the transistor when it's conducting it equals two two times the vcc the p the v peak divided by by rl minus vl squared over two rl okay that's the power of the transistor so simply it's whatever power from the power supply you deduct of it whatever power across the load and you lift with the power across the transistor and the average of that power now if you still remember that when you average it you get half of it that one in here we have it like we said it only conducts for half a cycle so when you average it same equations as divided by two when it's average it's equal the power across the transistor when it was conducting divided by 2 that equals vcc multiplied by vl peak divided by pi rl minus vl squared divided by 4 rl okay so just half of it divide this by 2 you get the average of it now we want to find when the maximum power occurs and for that we use uh, calculus and we need to find the first derivative of it and make it equal to zero and that's what we do 
and here we find the d b of the transistor average divided by the d of the vl peak to know exactly when that when that function becomes zero and we equate it with zero to know exactly when that happened and doing such a thing it's not a big idea really as we see in here when you find the derivative for this part okay you just take that VL peak out because it's with the, the VL you find it with the, the VL finding when, when that peak will occur and for this part in here which is raised to the power it's simply taking the power put it in front of the whole function and deduct one out of that power in there which equals to 2 VL peak divided by 4 L that means equals 0 okay and more analysis in here VCC over by RL equals 2 multiplied trying to find when that 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 uh, maximum power occurs uh, which equals 2 VL peak divided by 4 RL now solving for VL to know exactly when that happens okay that means when that function reaches the zero VL it will be equal to 2 over by multiplied by the VCC so the maximum power occurs when you have a peak equals to 0.63 VCC anything less than that with less stress the conduction transistor anything any amplitude more than this 0.63 will make the transistor relax and less power will be dissipated in it so this is the maximum thing where the equation gets flat the derivative gets flat okay and you get your maximum your maximum of course if you take the second derivative it tells you that you are aware of the max which is negative that's indicating it will be going down so you are exactly at the maximum point in here 2 over by multiplied by VCC and more on this go back to the P transistor max when it's conducting the same thing in here we apply that value instead of the VL so we just replace what we had in the previous equation in here we replaced with the actual value for that VL which is 2 over by VCC and the same thing in here we are trying to have a value now for the PT max so whenever we want to know the PT max immediately just plug the numbers in there and get what we want and the same thing in here PT max when it's conducting it would be equal to 4 times the VCC squared over by squared RL minus the 4 VCC squared 2 by squared RL simplifying it more would give us 2 VCC squared over by squared RL and this is for the conduction while it's conducting that's what I'd like to emphasize so whenever you want to average it you have to divide that PT over 2 and this is the main result and this is what we were looking for so this is for a single every transistor or many transistors or whatever this is the power that will be available for the NPN and this is the power also available for the PNP okay it is VCC squared divided by by squared RL so immediately in such a state like stage like that and you have a sinusoidal wave just to plug these numbers and you know exactly the maximum power for that passing device and according to this you can design your heat sink or whatever you have okay I hope that was useful thanks for watching